Welcome to TV3. On this week's episode, we'll be checking out the latest announcements from Bandai, I Bought Something Red, and of course, rounding out the show with answering some of your questions in the feedback section. As always, if you want to introduce a feature episode of TV3, you can always do so by sending in your video intro to my email over at typev3 at gmail.com, or you can use the social media links over at Twitter and Instagram. Alright, so it's all Bandai news this week, and we'll start off with their Tamashii Nations division as they just dropped a huge ton of pre-order info for their August releases. First up, we have a price and release date for their next Soul of Chogokin, which is Maz and Kaiser. Coming out in August for about 20,000 yen, this thing looks like a beast. However, I did have to do a double take when the promotional images came out because I actually thought this is just a reissue of the smaller SRC because this SOC just looks exactly like that. And uh, I suppose that's to be expected. This is supposed to be a take on its classic cartoon appearance, and I think it looks good. The only thing I'll say is that if I were to spend a lot of money on a big Maz and Kaiser, I think at this point I'd go with Sentinels, just because it has a bit more of artistic flair to it versus this uh, sort of slavish representation of its appearance in the cartoon. Regardless, if you are a Maz and Kaiser fan, I'm sure that this is going to be the version of the Super Robot you'll want to get. Moving on is the next entry into the DX Chogokin Macross series. This is the VF-31C Siegfried from Macross Delta. This is the VF piloted by Mirage, and if I'm honest, this is the version of the VF-31 that I've been looking forward to most because I thought Mirage was the best character on the show, and I love the colors that her VF carries. It's this sort of magenta ish pink in some instances some would say red uh, regardless it is my favorite variant of the 31 and i look forward to getting this also with an august release date and also carrying a price tag well above the 20,000 yen mark so not cheap but i will say if you are looking for the best macross toy on the market currently available the VF-31 is the way to go. There are five different versions, and I say if you're looking for any sort of gateway into Macross, pick up any versions of the 31. It could be this C, it could be the J, it could be the F, it could be whatever else. It is a great toy, and I definitely recommend picking up at least one of them if you are big into transforming toys. Okay, onto some smaller releases, and we finally have pre-order info and colored pictures of their SH Figuarts Kami. It is coming out in August, again with a retail price of about 6,000 yen. And I gotta say, this looks really good. I love the way the face turned out. I think the figure as a whole looks great, but I can't deny that around her hips, it looks a bit fragmented. And it's mostly because that's just Cammy's naked skin, and I guess you would expect to see a smooth, sleek body, but there is a, a definite break in the figure to accommodate for the hips. And I totally understand if you're sitting there thinking that it looks awful. For me, it is a this is an action figure, and action figures come with breaks in the sculpt to accommodate for articulation, and SH Figure Arts is one of the most articulated toy lines out there, so this is kind of just par for the course. I still think it looks great. Cammy is still the one I'm looking forward to most. These pictures look promising, and I can't wait till uh, her release date comes out. On a slightly related note, the other SH Figure Arts that we got an announcement for is Spider-Man, and this is based off of Spider-Man's appearance in the upcoming movie Spider-Man Homecoming. This is the one with Tom Holland. He's got that cool new Spider-Man suit that's been designed by Tony Stark. And the great thing about this toy is that it comes with a backpack, a cell phone, and he comes with two different heads where some where one of his eyes is squinting or both of his eyes are squinting and it just looks really neat. It's going to create for some uh, cool photo ops. The toy looks super poseable as it should be. It is Spider-Man so I do expect this thing to be very poseable and it's a figure art. Again, August release with a similar price of 6,000 yen. I look forward to it and you know that's that's saying something because I have kind of dropped off of the Marvel SH figure arts but this is definitely one I am keeping my eye out for and I hope to pick it up in the future. All right, let's switch gears over into Bandai's other side, and that is their hobby division, namely Gundams. First up, we got a solo picture of the high-grade Astaroth Renacimento. I believe I said that correctly. It's just one simple image, and all it is is the basically Gundam Astaroth and he's got a couple more upgrades to him. He's got a revised left gauntlet. He's got a right shoulder piece added to him. And I believe, I think there is a secondary weapon beside the proto-demolition blade on his back. 
You also have this cool asymmetrical V fin, and I think this Gundam looks cool. I liked all the variants of the Astroth, and I like this one as well. I think it's it looks promising, and I look forward to seeing how the actual model kit turns out. Still on the subject of Iron Blooded Orphans, we finally got images of the Gundam Dantelion in its model kit form, and I gotta say, it's looking pretty cool. The basic robot is very simple. It's not something that I find too interesting, but it's all about the backpack that it carries. First of all, the backpack is huge and it kind of just sticks out like a sore thumb, but it has a great reason for it, and that is that it turns into a pair of arms, and these arms are huge. It gives the Gundam a bit more of a, a gorilla-like appearance. It can hold larger weapons, and I think it's a, it's a really neat gimmick. I'm more interested in the engineering behind how this is going to work with the model kit, but nevertheless, it's something that that's for me has gone from not really interested to I think I can see myself picking this up in the near future. Moving over to the Gundam Build Fighter section of the show, and we have pre-order information on the Gundam Schwartz Ritter. I believe this is a May release. It is the gold and black Gundam that looks to be heavily modified from the Denial with a pair of huge wings. Now, those huge wings are the significant point here because it turns out they are a pair of swords, which then can combine into a huge sword. Who doesn't like big swords? So, I mean, that's really all there is to say here. We, we got actual colored shots or, or press release shots and we now know the gimmick of the Gundam. It's looking very cool. Can't wait to see how it turns out in person. And finally is probably the biggest news of the week for me and it is probably going to be, I'll say it right now, Gundam of the year. We have the petite guy, character guy, Fumina, and Gyanko. These are essentially the tiny little petite bear guys only they've been dressed up and modified so that it looks like characters from the show uh, wearing the bear guy armor. We have Fumina because who doesn't love Fumina? She is the number one seller in merchandise from Build Fighters. And Gyanko because there's a ton of Gyanko fans out there who uh, are desperately asking for Gyanko stuff. The Fumina one I think is the one to get. I think it looks great. Gyanko looks cool, but the thing about hers is I don't like how her pigtails just seem so far away from her head. It's just this weird visual illusion, and it's kind of just what they had to do with, with the model kit due to the bear guy's really wide head. But they both look adorable. I would love to see more of the Build Fighters cast done up in this style. I would love to get an Isla with a white bear or a Reiji with a red bear. I think it would be super cool. Let's face it, it's a character. You're going to buy it. It looks awesome. Like I said, Gundam of the Year. <laughs> Alright, so this week I picked up a variety of items, some toys, some electronics, and I'll start off with the latter. First up, I bought a new iPhone. I got the red iPhone 7, and I picked this up because my current iPhone, or the previous one I had was the iPhone 6, it had a busted screen, and when I say busted, I mean you could see the inside of the phone from the front side of the phone, so it was a bit, it was, it was, it was starting to go, and... I figured, hey, if I'm going to get a new iPhone, I might as well get the red one because everyone knows it's three times faster. Now, of course, I'd love to show you the phone, but the thing is, I am currently recording with it because I usually use an iPhone to record all my videos. So if you notice a change in visual quality, let me know because I want to know if there is a difference because I am using a 7, I was using a 6, so I would love to know if there is a, a visual difference there. Next up, I picked up a gaming headset. This is the HyperX Cloud 2. This is the, I guess, most popular headset amongst the pro gaming scene. I see a lot of Twitch streamers use this, and I've been really looking for a headset with a mic and a great sounding headset. This is 7.1 surround sound. It has an aluminum body, uh, very comfortable. It's over the ear, ear headphones, and the actual cord is like a nylon string so there's no fraying or twisting or, or any signs of me actually breaking it. Uh, it's it's a quality headset, I really like it. Alright, on to the toys and such, and the first up here is the real grade gold frame Astray Amatsumina, I think I got the name right. I have a review of this up, if you want to know my full thoughts on it, it's you can click the link just to go check that out. And then of course the big, big toy I bought this week, or that came in, was the DX Chagokin what is this? SV262HS Drakken 3. This is the lead villain VF from Macross Delta. And I gotta say, when I first saw the design on the show, I thought to myself, that could be my favorite design in all of Macross. Basically because it's a robot knight that turns into this really cool jet. So here it is. I've been messing around with it for the better part of last week and I have just fallen in love with it. I think that all the modes look great, at least very faithful to the on-screen representation. 
the gimmicks and such are pretty neat. I love this shield. The shield, how it turns into the tail fin is really neat. And the gun is, is fine too. Where this toy gets really, really contentious or is its transformation. It just feels very inefficient. You know, the previous Macross release, the VF31, like I said earlier in the episode, best Macross toy on toy shelves right now. You know, it's a, in fact, I would say it's the best Macross toy of all time in terms of just a playable, transformable figure. This almost falls in the footsteps. I mean, it has great build quality. The The paint and finish is, is gorgeous. I mean, just look at this thing. But the transformation is, I wouldn't say it's more complicated. It, it is just way less efficient at doing things. I feel like I'm doing way too much work to get the smallest of changes done. And I think that's where this toy really will sour some people. I probably would say this is my favorite Macross toy, and I say that because it is different. You know, as much as I like Macross, something or some opinion that I've always held is that Macross has basically been one toy that they've iterated on for over the years until they and they just added a number to it. So the VF1 all the way up to the VF31, even though they're different toys and different designs, they all share the same design mentality. And I feel like I've been playing with a slightly adjusted or modified version of uh, VFs over the past who knows how long. The Draken actually feels like something that's genuinely different, that's something that's tried to do something different, and while I don't think that this toy fully fully succeeds in the in the in, in being a, a great all-around toy, the fact that it's different and the fact that it's new is enough for me to just really uh, I guess, fall in love with it. So yeah, I like this toy a lot. I don't know if, if hardcore Macross fans will like it as much as I do, but I gotta say, this is probably my favorite Macross thing that I own right now. All right, let's answer some questions. Shroud Savage wants to know, do you have the Super Mini Plug Gal Gygar or any of the Super Mini Plus? No, I do not have any of the Super Mini Plus. I think the Super Mini Plus seem really cool and the recent characters that they've been releasing are all things that are in my interest window. The only reason I don't pick them up is because they're model kits, and I just don't want more model kits. What are your thoughts about the Iron-Blooded Orphans final episode or latest episode? I don't know. I stopped watching Iron-Blooded Orphans about seven weeks ago because I thought the show was awful. I haven't looked back, and I have no reason or inclination to go and try and catch up. Who was your favorite Transformers character from the TV shows, comics, or movies? That's a simple answer. Megatron. Specifically, G1 Megatron. I've always loved Megatron ever since I was a kid. That's probably the one consistency I have with my Transformers fandom. Have you seen Hunter x Hunter, and which kid of yours has your favorite paint job? No, I have not seen Hunter x Hunter, but I have heard about Hunter x Hunter a lot. Namely because it's my sister's favorite series, or one of her favorite series, and I've always been meaning to get around to it, but then my sister also likes Fruits Basket as her other favorite series, and I didn't like that, so based off of her opinion, I probably won't like Hunter x Hunter. As for which kid of mine has my favorite paint job, it's always, uh, you know, I would say it's probably one of the simpler ones, one of my earlier ones. I really like the set that I did for the three easy SRs from Build Fighters Try. It, it was just, you know, a very simple paint scheme. It was I painted the inner frames, or not the inner frame, but the, the frame pieces, a sort of gunmetal. I did a simple dry brushing weathering technique on it. And then I think as a unit, it just came out really, really well. It, it just goes to show that, you know, like a little bit of detailing here and there can go a long way. And I like how they ended up looking very black and white apart from those neon green stickers. So yeah, I really liked how how that turned out. Also, the my more my most recent 1 to 100 VDR was pretty cool. A lot of my friends who see that one in person, they think that's my favorite or the best thing that I've done. And uh, I guess I wouldn't disagree. I think it does look really cool. I mean, it turned out better than I thought it would have turned out. So yeah, I'm into that. What do you think about the Frame Arms Girls model kits? The Frame Arms Girls model kits are an interesting one. On paper, they should appeal to me. They're cute anime girls wearing robot armor, and I kind of like that kind of stuff. But the thing about the FAG releases is that they have one aesthetic choice to it that I super can't get behind, and that is the fact that they're only wearing their underwear. And I don't mean like, oh, they're only wearing their underwear under the armor. I mean like they're wearing armor, but when it comes to their crotch section, there's no, there's nothing there. It's literally just underwear. And on some of the releases, they're just wearing thongs. And it's so, it's so off-putting to me. I mean, if you were into it, you're into it. Like, I'm not going to judge you. But for me, it's just not something I can get behind. I mean, if they have a release where they just totally cover them up properly, I'll probably be more into it. But as it stands, some of them just are very off-putting to me. Type V3, are you into cars? If so, what are some that you like? Yeah, I love cars. I've loved cars since I was a little boy. I had a picture of a car 
uh, on my on my bedroom wall for the longest time. But in more recent years, as I've gotten older, my interest in cars, at least production cars, has definitely waned. I'm more into just race cars, like cars that actually, you know, do stuff. My favorite car of all time is the Ferrari F40. I've always loved that since I was a kid. That's never changed. I, you know, if I could buy any car in the world, that would be it. What is a figure from a series that hasn't been made yet that, you, that you're most looking forward to coming out? Um, are you talking about something that's been announced or something completely brand new? If it's something that's already been announced and I'm looking forward to it, it's obviously any of the Figma Overwatch characters. Uh, I suppose Figma Tracer would be the first one. I can't wait for that. I want to ask, what's your favorite anime scene? My favorite anime scene is very easy. It's the second half of episode 8 to Gurren Lagann. You all probably know what it is and what happens, and I just love everything that happens in it. If you haven't seen Gurren Lagann, I definitely recommend it. It's my favorite anime, you know, that's why I do have the sticker here of the Dai Gurren Brigade, so check it out. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of another episode of TV3. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's anything you want to discuss in further detail with me, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section down below, and I'll try and answer it next week. Now, before we go, I will say that this past weekend was April Fool's, and as always, if you were on the internet, then I'm sure you saw a huge amount of crazy April Fool's news stories. My favorite was the one done with Gal Gai Gar, where they reimagined genetic Gal Gai Gar to have have all these cute little cuddly animals as its combination. I believe they even went so far as to have a actual copy of the Super Mini Plug Galgagar with a raccoon tail and a dog chest. So definitely, definitely fun stuff. I'd love to know some of your favorite April Fool's pranks that happened this weekend, so make sure you let me know. In any case, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!